an ordinary citizen of Kosovo, the system would say, no, no, we cannot afford that. In Kosovo, the monthly salary of top international diplomat is over 30,000 euros, which is equal to 120 local average salaries of those who are lucky enough to have a job, or 360 pensions of the elderly. In Kosovo, the shift from occupation under Serbia to a country under international protectorate seems like a shift from political prison to humanitarian hospital. The guards have been replaced by nurses, yet self-determination is still denied. In prison, capabilities were suspended due to lack of rights. In hospital, our rights are suspended due to lack of capabilities. In prison, one is beaten, ill-treated, tortured, hated, but nevertheless retains political subjectivity. In hospital, there is no more torture or physical ill-treatment, but also there is no political subjectivity. The doctors and nurses decide. They generally say that the condition of the patient is calm but tense. With an international protectorate, you are not in a transition since you are always in a transition. At the same time, what has been lacking for Kosovo has been precisely transition. The international protectorate asked us to move abruptly from socialism to neoliberalism. What we have instead is a country in transit and off transit, a transit country rather than society in transition. Manuel Delanda, inspired by Gilles Deleuze, juxtaposes nation-state with metropolis. The state of a nation has to do with control of its territory and borders. A metropolis has to do with the control of flux and traffic. Nation-states have armies. A metropolis has police. Nation-states are the majority of Western states. Metropolis is a city like Amsterdam, San Francisco, or Hong Kong like an airport terminal where everybody comes and no one stays. A transit country under international protectorate is such a country, without state sovereignty, without economic production, without border control for the territory. We have transport lines without destinations, traffic on endless smooth asphalt. In transit countries, there is no accumulation of capital, but only the circulation of capital. Capital arrives in order not to stay. International protectorate promises market economy, but what you get is market without economy. The only factories that work well are the universities that produce armies of unemployed with diplomas. International protectorates generally push for privatization, treating national wealth and public goods as a burden from which we natives must relieve ourselves. Privatization is represented as the only economic idea, even though it rather shows the lack of ideas. With privatization promoted as a self-evident truth, what happens is the privatization of profit and nationalization of losses. It doesn't bring real liberalization, but rather shifts public monopolies into private ones. Like from the viewpoint of Mars, there are no people in the view of the international protectorate. Conflicts are viewed only through the lens of ethnicity. What in modernity were tribes, in post-modernity are ethnicities. The international gaze identifies, as in the Terra Nullius, different ethnicities. It proclaims that it wants to build multi-ethnicity and a multicultural society while starting from ethnic affiliation, from differentiating between ethnicities. It ignores what is in common among the people, what is universal among the people, their need for freedom, dignity, health care, social insurance, and education. Universality would have brought about a multi-ethnic and multicultural society. By aiming for multi-ethnicity, one moves towards the solidification of ethnic particularities. So if, you, if we want a multicultural society, we shall accomplish it by not having it as a goal, but rather expecting it as a natural consequence of universality as initial point. So we start from what is in common among the people, and that's how we reach multicultural society, not by starting what are the differences between us. 
International protectorates promote diversity at the cost of solidarity and difference at the cost of universality. International protectorate does not see human beings, individuals, citizens, pupils, or students, but only different ethnic communities. We are at a major juncture in what in the parlance of global policymaking is called global governance. The term global governance captures very well the view from Mars. It embodies the cosmic view of Earth, of crisis to be managed, and of democracy and markets to be installed, and civil societies to be implanted by a global peace industry. From Kosovo to Iraq to Afghanistan to East Timor and across the so-called crisis zones of the world, global governance is busy reshaping societies and institutions in accordance with categories and designs of its masters, scholars, and analysts. In conclusion, international protectorate, as an expression of global governance, needs to constantly criticize its own creation. The new political system, the local political elite, the local administration, the local corruption. By constantly denouncing its own creation, the international protectorate is exposing its own failures. Out of this downward spiral of delegitimation, a void is created, an opening which allows vital space for a new politics to arise. A new political movement is born out of the negation of this deteriorating status quo. From stability of crisis, we move to the crisis of stability. Political movements should be like Bertolt Brecht's epic theater, a parliament for discussion, and a political school for learning. Real changes certainly always come from below, but what make them more than possible are organizations that act and actions which imply organization. Thank you. Thank you, Arvin Kloti. Next up um, is another surprise talk, which is not 